Muy buenos días a todas y a todos. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas otra vez a la Universidad de ICESI en este segundo día de nuestro eh, evento de reflexión eh, sobre el modelo educativo finlandés. Para quienes no vinieron ayer, voy a recordar el perfil de nuestras participantes, de nuestras invitadas, eh, y ellas van a explicar ahora cuál es la dinámica de trabajo a lo largo de la mañana. Nos acompañan en la mesa principal la profesora Tina Elena Silander, que es directora del Departamento de Formación Docente de la Facultad de Educación de la Universidad de Yuváscula en Finlandia. Tina es eh, bióloga de formación de base, luego tiene un doctorado en educación y actualmente participa activamente en el desarrollo de la pedagogía universitaria para eh, los profesionales académicos de la Universidad de Yubáscula. Es maestra en educación secundaria y durante su doctorado se refirió al proceso de enseñanza y aprendizaje en relación con el concepto de calentamiento global y actualmente tiene intereses de investigación en el desarrollo de modelos eficaces para la formación del profesorado y el desarrollo de modelo de las escuelas del futuro. Damos de nuevo la bienvenida a Tina a la universidad. Nos acompaña también la profesora Emilia Benjarvi, que es la líder principal de EduCluster Finlandia. EduCluster es precisamente un clúster que trabaja en pro de la excelencia de formación docente. Emilia eh, es historiadora de la Universidad Complutense de Madrid, tuvo un grado de maestría en Historia, pero además tiene un grado en eh, enseñanza secundaria de las ciencias sociales. Antes de incorporarse a la Universidad de Yubáscula, Emilia trabajó como especialista de educación en la Embajada de Finlandia en Santiago de Chile, así que tenemos la fortuna de que como estudió en Madrid y vivió en Chile, habla un español impecable, como habrán podido ver quienes estuvieron ayer. Eh, actualmente, como experta de EduCluster, Emilia está liderando el diseño e implementación de soluciones y programas de desarrollo de competencias de educación en estrecha colaboración con los equipos de expertos finlandeses y áreas de educación de otros países, principalmente latinoamericanos. De manera que trabaja efectivamente en pro del desarrollo de la educación en América Latina. Bienvenida, Emilia, de nuevo a la universidad. El tema del día de hoy va a ser la formación docente. Estaremos concentrados entonces en saber cómo se forma a los profesionales que se dedican a ser maestros en Finlandia. Doy paso entonces a Tina, que va a trabajar con nosotros toda la mañana. Espero que todos eh, quienes lo requieran tengan ya su equipo de traducción, porque la conferencia será en inglés. Y de nuevo, bienvenidas y bienvenidos. Buenos días, Kali. How are you this morning? I'm also fine, and I'm so happy to see you all here. I hope we have a good, good morning session here. I'm just putting this translator. Okay. We have time approximately until 12 o'clock. We are going to have a break around after one hour. If you get exhausted, you can have some uh, some breaks on your own, and or you can stretch yourself or wave to me and say that this is too boring, uh, change, change the subject, please. But what we are going to discuss today is teacher education in Finland and how we are uh, seeing our education. As we discussed yesterday, Finnish teachers have high professional competence and they have strong ethi ethical commitment to their work. They are seen high professionals as lawyers or doctors and young people really want to be teachers. It's not a profession that uh, you end up because you don't want to be anything else young people really want to be teachers in Finland, especially class teachers. And 
this is a profession for young ladies mainly. We do have also male class teachers, but it's not so typical. What is really important in our uh, educational system is that teachers have full autonomy in deciding, deciding the pedagogical approaches, the methods they use, the uh, books they use, or whether to use books at all. So we are facing, we have the culture of autonomy and trust. We do not have any external assessment or any formal teacher evaluations. And one really important part of teachers' work is curriculum planning. And if I understand correctly, this is not the case in all over the world. In some places, teachers are just implementing the curriculum designed by others. But in Finland, teachers are actively taking part in curriculum processes. And also, the student assessment is a very important part of the teacher's work. And in uh, assessment is autonomous, uh, continuous, and uh, teachers use colleagues uh, in the help, but there is no standards that they are using. So to sum up, teachers are highly educated pedagogical experts who have the necessary competence for any demand of schoolwork. And that is very much to say, and that puts teacher education into the very demanding position because we need to be able to educate teachers so they are independent and very committed to their work. In Finland, we have academic teacher education Teacher education was transferred to universities in 1971. So we have approximately 40 years of hist 40 years history in academic teacher education. All teachers have master's degree. So class teachers major in educational sciences and subject teachers major in the academic subject that they teach. And Educating class uh, subject teachers is mutual, uh, or we do it together with other faculties. In our faculties, we offer the pedagogical studies that is 60 credit points, and one credit point is 27 hours of student work, and the student work includes the independent work and contact hours. The only exception for this master's degree requirement is kindergarten teachers. You can be a kindergarten teacher with bachelor's degree, but nowadays mo many, many students choose to go on and have master's degree also. The principles of Finnish teacher education are the following. Our teacher education is research-based. It integrates theory and practice and we educate teachers to be lifelong learners. And in the next, I will tell a little bit more what we mean by research-based teacher education. It means that we try to create a research-based professional culture inside the teacher education and inside schools. We try to uh, educate, or we educate our teacher students in a way that they can use and understand scientific literature. Different kind of journal articles are very important part of student studies. And we hope teacher students to have research orientating, uh, orientation, and that means that they are testing and extending their own knowledge and understanding by means of empirical observations and critical reflection. <laughs> and this is also the way that teacher educators do their work. So in the way this we show, we, in the way that we do our work, we hope teachers to do their work in the schools. And that is why we hope, te hope to, that teachers are researchers. And because of that, our curricula, place emphasis on processes, goals, 
rather than on contents to be learned or on objectives related to student post-training behavior. As I told teacher, teachers are lifelong learners and we educate them in a way that they always want to improve their own actions, their own pedagogical solutions, their own uh, educational thinking. And to, we hope them to do this by using research methods. It's not only that they write journal articles, it's not possible in the class teacher's work, but we hope them to use the scientific articles and to have this kind of investigative mindset for their own work. And what is very, very important is that teacher education itself is an object of study and research. We are doing research on what we do ourselves, what kind of educational models we are using, what kind of um, solutions we have, and what are the best practices for Finnish teacher education. I have to guess if I'm on the, the right slide because I don't understand any of the uh, text in the slide. So <laughs> I need to look if this, my English version looks anything like that. So please, if I talk totally different that is on slides, tell me because it's very embarrassing. <laughs> okay, teaching, practice teaching combines practice and theory. And in our education, theory and practice go in hand in hand, not as the opposites. And this integration takes place in supervised teaching practice. All teacher students have to have uh, 20 or 26 credit hours of guided or supervised teaching pra practice. Uh, during this teaching practice, teacher students, students use this kind of experimental approach in which they research their own work. Re they reflect on the theory that, that they have learned. They reflect the observations that they make in the classrooms and in the school environment. And these the teaching session pr sessions provide the way for the students to form their own educational uh, philosophy based on both theory and practice. Um, when teacher students start their studies in September in Finland, they always have their first teaching practice in the first semester. For example, in one of our projects, teacher students had a one month experience in teacher training and we put them into the school and said that here you have 400 students, some teacher student colleagues and you need to uh, need to have three days of teaching uh, project. Please welcome and design it with other colleagues. And to be honest, they had only one month's experience in teacher education. So we exposed them to the reality very, uh, very early on of their teaching. Uh, this teaching project, project took place in, um, in municipality school, but most of our teacher training practices take place in teacher training schools, which is uh, the faculty school owned by the university, but it, it has this kind of normal school operations, but the extra duty is to supervise teacher students. This says something that duties of teacher training school, right? Yes. So teacher training school provides teaching for the comprehensive and upper secondary levels. Normal pupils from very close area of the school. It's not elite school. It, it has normal students. Uh, 
uh, teachers training school teachers have experience and training in tutoring the teacher trainees and they are very well trained to do that uh, moreover teacher training school is this kind of uh, experiencing uh, environment to do experiences and it is part of our research world research community quite many of teacher training school teachers do actively research and if they do not do research they give their own pupils their own classes as the object of the study wrong way little by little i'm learning some spanish okay teacher education curricula in finland looks a bit like this each university is autonomous so we can have our own teacher education curriculum but each teacher education curriculum involves academic discipline in case of class teachers the academic dis discipline is educational sciences and for example for mathematics teacher the academic subject is mathematics all teacher students have studies in research and in methodologies they all have studies in pedagogy and this part is 60 credit points for all teacher students and as i told one credit credit point is 27 hours of student work moreover our curriculum involves communication language and ict studies that are obligatory for all students but they also can have and have personal study plan and optional uh, optional studies and these optional studies are the place to specialize for example te class teacher students can have minor in mathematic mathematics minor in music minor in history so or minor in english for example so he or she is specialized to teach for example music in elementary schools and the school principals typically give uh, music teaching hours for specialized teachers just a minute i take a glass of water any questions so far we can have one question if if you have please and if you just wait that i can get this thing ready un estudiante puede escoger estar en una escuela de práctica docente Can students choose if he can be, if he can have a student uh, teaching practice? Exacto. No. Sí. Si sí puede escoger o no estar en una escuela de práctica docente como estudiante. Lo pienso porque porque de pronto tanta, uh -huh. tantos docentes diferentes a un mismo grupo pues now, de pronto pierde la estabilidad. No sé. I ask help for Emilia now. All students have some courses in the teacher training school, but some they can choose to have in other municipality schools, but not in any school. We have this kind of contracts uh, in, with certain schools, so teachers in those schools also have the skills to tutor teacher, teacher trainees. So, yes and no. <laughs> Okay, we go, we're going to have the rest of the questions in between. Now we are going to have a look into the teacher education programs. 
This is just a glance. I'm not going to go very deeply in any of these. So first we have early childhood education and care. As I told, kindergarten teachers can have bachelor's degree, but most of them have master's degree. And the early childhood education and care covers both the daycare arrangements offered to families and also the perspective on goal-oriented early childhood education open it up for children. So the early childhood education and care in comprises the perspectives of care, education and teaching and we, we use the term, term educare for this uh, early childhood education and care. And it is built on the holistic view on children's growth, development and learning. And he here you can see the learning areas of early childhood education and care, content orientations in uh, early, uh, early childhood education and care are mathematics orientation, natural science orientation, historical orientation, aesthetic orientation, ethic or orientation, and this kind of religious philosophical orientations. And the, these are not subjects. These are just orientations that are mm, covered during the daycare and during the early education. And the core learning areas in the pre-primary education, that is age of six years, is these are not like mathematics, languages, but various forms of expressing oneself, rich world of languages, me and society. I explore and act in my environment and I grow and I develop. So our pre-primary education is not like school hours, it's more like playing uh, having play as the method to learn. And it uses the holistic way of learning and children's own ways of acting that are playing, physical activities, artistic experiences and self-experience, expression, exploration. So the pre-primary education consists of joy of learning and the motivational aspects of learning. Our children do not sit in, uh, in front of tables and learn mathematical calculations. They learn mathematics while, while playing, while having physical activity, and while, for example, throwing snowballs to the, to the wall or something like that. Uh, I spent two days in my children's pre preschool and I had never had such a fun during my working life because uh, in the morning we had breakfast, then we went out and have some outdoor activities. Uh, children can choose what they want to do, it's not controlled. Of course, they are taken care of, but they can choose what kind of activities they have. After these outdoor activi activities, we went inside, had lunch, and then we, we read a book, played a while, and then we had nap. And that was the most wonderful part in that pre-school pre day, at least for me. Not all the children enjoyed the, taking the nap, but I hope that in in my office, we could have this kind of option every day. And after nap, we, all, we played a while, and then the parents came and took us home. Of course, I, didn't, I wasn't taken home, but because I drowned myself. So the curriculum. The degree program is divided two phases, the bachelor, of Arts, Bachelor of Education is 180 credit points. It takes 
three years to complete, and after that, kindergarten teachers can go and have a job. But as I told, nowadays quite many continues to have a bachelor's degree, that is two years of uh, studies and 120 credit points. Our kindergarten teacher uh, curriculum is phenomena based as all curriculums in university, our university teacher education curriculums. And it has five phenomena, learning and guidance, education, society and change, competence and expertise, scientific thinking and knowledge, and interaction and cooperation. And these phenomena go through the whole curriculum. The scope and structure of bachelor program, it introduces students to the basics of early childhood education and gives them skills they need in order to follow the development and research of the discipline. And it prepares the students for scientific thinking and work and for applying the acquired knowledge at the work. And this bachelor degree formed the basis of master's level studies. The major subject in Master of Arts degree is early childhood education. And this master's degree is based on the, of course, on the bachelor's degree studies. And students have to ha have or must have completed the bachelor studies with the minimum grade of good. If they are uh, having satisfactory grades, they are not able to continue to the master's studies. And these master studies include advanced studies, communication studies, and minor subject st studies. And you can see the credit points after each, each of these themes. For example, the advanced studies consist of supervised teaching, teaching practices, 10 credit points, research methods, and thesis studies. Uh, 40 credit points. Basic education is the next one in, in our presentation. It includes primary school grades 1 to 6, where teaching is carried out mostly by class teachers or primary teachers but some subjects are taught by subject teachers, for example, languages, music, crafts, physical education, or by class teacher who is specialized in these subjects. Lower secondary school, grade seven to nine, uh, and teaching is carried out by subject teachers. Uh, that is, each subject have their own teacher. For example, one teacher is for music, the other teacher can have classes in chemistry and physics, or mathematics and physics, and so on. And our basic education is for children aged 7 to 16, and it's compul compulsory and free of charge. Uh, school books, other material, transportation, lunch, Everything is free. And nearly 100% of age group, group complete, but, but there is a small portion of pupils who are not able to complete basic education, that, and that group is the one that we worry very much, and we, we need to um, have new models of education, so uh, our 100 percent of our teacher, our students will complete co the basic education. This table shows the structure and contents of class teacher education degree 
which is master's degree and involves 300 credits. Education studies includes basic studies, subject studies, and in master's degree, advanced studies in education. And as you, you can see, the five phenomena goes from the basic studies to the advanced studies. And advanced studies also include mm, research methods, thesis seminar, master's thesis, and maturity test. This test is to show that you can write uh, good language and express the subject of your thesis in very fluent way. You have all the dots and so on in correct places. These multidisciplinary studies in subjects and cross-cultural thematic models taught in basic education. This is name is terrible and I can never remember its correct name either in Finnish or in English. But it, I it is in the bachelor's degree and it is the part where we teach our teacher students how to teach mathematics, how to teach history, how to teach natural sciences, how to teach music and so on. So it includes both pedagogy and the contents of these subjects. And if you are a subject teacher and you wish to be also a class teacher, you need to take these 60 credit points. So you have the license to teach also in the pre, uh, elementary school. Any questions concerning this structure and content? We can have one question, please. Lady in the red will have the question back there. Okay, you can have you can have the next one. Okay. Eh, quisiera saber lo siguiente. Realmente la educación básica termina a los 16 años. En ese momento pueden entrar en la vía académica o en la vía de tecnología. Entonces los que entran en la vía académica hacen tres años de licenciatura y luego dos de maestría. Así que en total son, digamos, cinco años de educación posterior al, al grado de, de bachiller. Y aquí en Colombia nosotros tenemos que ellos hacen el bachillerato, o sea, la, completo, que son en total 12 años de escolaridad, además de eso, cuatro o cinco años de licenciatura y después los otros de maestría. Es muchísimo tiempo, pero el resultado no es bueno. Entonces, me gustaría saber qué es lo que realmente, cómo hacen para que por tan poco tiempo los estudiantes de verdad se conviertan en muy buenos profesores. Y lo otro pequeño es la contabilidad de los credit points. No es claro si son horas en un semestre, en un año, y tampoco cuál es la suma total para, para ver cuál es el peso que tiene cada uno de las digamos, de las ponderaciones de los points. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't clear enough. After the basic education, you go to the high school and have 12 years education, and after that you can go to the university. And uh, our bachelor's programs really are three years, and master's programs uh, an uh, additional two years. So you have... 12 years plus five years, and then you are a qualified teacher. And the other question was about the accountability of the credit hours. Uh, 
it approximations for some credit hours, uh, for some courses you need to work harder. Maybe you need to work mm, some extra hours if the content is difficult for you. But it's on average one credit hour is 27 hours of student work altogether. It, uh, it includes the uh, content hours with the professor. It includes if you read books, it includes your essays and project works and so on. And of course there are individual differences, how quick you are in reading, how quick you are in writing, but it's on average 27 hours of student work. In Hmm. Okay. No. El. Sí. Eh, bueno, voy a tratar de aclarar el, el tema del sistema de créditos. STS es el sistema de créditos de, de estudio. Eh, de la Unión Europea, de, en base al Acuerdo de Bolonia que se utiliza en todas las universidades de los países de la, de la Unión Europea. Y entonces, en un, un, como la profesora habló de, lo, de las 27 horas que corresponde a un crédito, no significa estar 27 horas en clase, sino son 27 horas de eh, de trabajo completo de estudios, estudio individual, eh, trabajos escritos, lectura y es una estimación. No, es un, es un número total, eh, depende cuando los cursos se organicen, cuando tiene que estar una actividad terminada, eh, allí como indica el, el, el número completo de créditos que se exige son 300 pero es en el tiempo en que el estudiante eh, tarde en, en terminar su carrera. El, el, el tiempo indicado para la licenciatura serían tres años y dos años para la maestría, pero mm, dependiendo de las circunstancias personales de cada uno puede tardar más o menos. No, la enseñanza básica, sí, sí, la enseñanza básica… Sí. No, es que entre medias está la enseñanza media. La, es que en Finlandia es, eh, son nueve años de enseñanza básica y después hay mm, dos años y medio de enseñanza media. Y después de la enseñanza media pueden aplicar para estudios universitarios. <risa> ya, gracias. Thank you, Emilia. Um, Buenos días. Okay. Hola. ¿Se escucha? Bueno, mi nombre es María Nancy Flores, yo soy instructora del Servicio Nacional de Aprendizaje SENA, una institución de educación para el trabajo y el desarrollo humano. Mi pregunta es la siguiente. En la licenciatura, ¿dónde está incluido en la estructura y en los contenidos el abordaje del aprendizaje para los niños y jóvenes con discapacidad cognitiva? ¿Y cómo se trabaja la enseñanza para los docentes para orientar la formación a este tipo de población? Ok, thank you for the very good question. Um, It comes in all of our courses. We have this kind of inclusive approach to uh, special education and students who have this, uh, disabilities. So it's like a red thread in all of our studies. But we do have some special study, special courses uh, pointed out to this question. For example, uh, in In the learning and guidance courses, we have themes that uh, de deals with the special education and special needs of students. But we have this, this uh, holistic view 
you for educating all the students in the same class, more or less. Yesterday we talked about this three-level support for the students, and after this uh, seminar we can discuss in more detail about that if you wish to have more knowledge. Okay, can we go on? Uh, after <laughs> This is a breakup, yes. <laughs> but we have quite a few slides before the break, so please <laughs> be patient. I try to be quite quick, and we can discuss afterwards in the uh, evening, uh, afternoon time, if you wish. So after completing the master's studies, our students have form formed a comprehensive overview of human growth, development, and of the growing and learning environment and the forms of education and educational systems as well as having constructed a consistent personal philosophy of education. And teacher students or teachers at this point are capable of systematically, systematically analyzing phenomena related to e education and schooling while integrating different experiment, experimental scientific and practical viewpoints and they are also able to identify differentiate solve and evaluate scientific and practical problems linked to their own field of expertise while taking into account of educational ethic ethical and social impacts of the show chosen solution they also are able to act in order to further the development of the field of activity and, and to constantly pursue the scientific and practical knowledge it requires. They, have capabili they are capable of planning, implementing and evaluating their teaching both independently and as member of working community. And they also have skills required for further academic studies. So class teachers that have completed master's degree uh, have uh, or are able to proceed to the doctoral studies and have a PhD in education if they wish to do so. Approximately it takes four years to complete the PhD de degree. Subject teacher education, as I told, is combination of studies in their own academic discipline, faculties, and at the Faculty of Education. Uh, they have a major in the school subject they taught, math, history, languages, and these studies are approximately 160 credit points, that is 100 uh, times 27 hours of, independ uh, of work. And these subject teachers have major, that is 60 points, in teachers' pedagogical studies, and that part is provided by Faculty of Education. They can have other minor studies, for example, second subject to be taught, some have even third subject. Uh, one very common combination is mathematics, chemistry, and physics. The other one is biology and geography. Uh, languages, for example, English and Germany. But usually, subject teachers have at least two subjects to be taught. They also have general studies and language and communication studies. And as in case of Masters of Education, they also have a total of 300 credit points in their master's degree program. The teacher's pedagogical subject studies comprises of basic studies in education, and that includes teaching practice, that is five credits. Intermediate studies in education consists of including teaching practice, altogether 15 credit points. So 
Subject teachers have 20 credit points in teaching practice out of this 60, that is the pedagogical studies for subject teachers. So we have to work very hard to get subject teachers to think as teachers. And in some universities, the subject studies uh, are in the last year of their education. But in, uh, in Yuvaskula, we have divided it into the three years. When they study, start to study their academic discipline, they also start to study pedagogical studies in their first year of university career. And also the third year and fourth year. So they have time to develop as teachers. It's not something just to add to the academic discipline. It's a holistic view of personal growth to the teacherhood. Yesterday we had more small discussion about how we choose our teacher students and this example is from class teacher education. We have two main routes for the uh, class teacher education. After upper secondary school you can have the selection in the department of teacher education and have bachelor and master's de degree like combined together. You can also have the bachelor's degree in other science degree area, for example, in early childhood education. And then you decide that the class teacher profession is the one that I hope to have. So you have the um, examination or student selection process after your bachelor's degree. But the first one, the upper one is the most common one. After the upper secondary school, you have the examination or entrance examination. This can be quite shocking to you because it shows this data is from year 2014 and we had 2,416 applicants for the 80 positions in our program and we accepted 3.3 percentage of the applicants. That shows how wanted profession teacher is. So we can choose the best of the best. And that is something when, what we really hope to develop, how we can get the most suitable candidates for teacher education programs. For subject teachers, the acceptance rates is somewhere between 10 and 20, depending on the subjects. Uh, for example, in mathematics teacher education programs, it is easier to get than to the class teacher programs. And some students, they use this kind of backdoor. They apply to teacher uh, mathematics education programs and in, in the middle of their studies, they, too, they apply and want to be the class teacher. Um, apply to the class teacher programs. And this is how we select our students. First, we have this Vakava examination that is a national student selection and it's done in cooperation with other universities. This is similar for all universities. Uh, and this Vakava examination evaluates the applicant's academic study skills that are needed in the educational sciences. It consists of multiple, multiple choice questions based on number of articles, six to eight articles in the field of education and all applicants, eligible applicants take the examinations. This one is quite hard Maybe I shouldn't tell you that, but a few years back I looked the examination and I'm not sure whether I could pass the exam to be a class, to, to be a 
student, teacher student in class teacher education programs. This one is very difficult. It needs quite a lot of reading, but if you have good academic skills, it's not so difficult. And this second phase is different in each universities. And this is the University of Jyväskylä case. Uh, the points earned from the Vaka Vakava ex examinations are used to select students to the next phase that is an aptitude test. And we invite approximately 200 applicants to this, uh, to this aptitude test. This test is organized by the personnel of our department and it's one day test for the applicant, but because the, there is so many applicants, we have to work quite many days. And the general goal is to select students who are motivated and who have the academic skills needed and who will complete the master's degree within the targeted time frame. On that side, you can see the goal, teacher education, and the goals uh, that we have. The goal is to educate professionals who are able to create te supportive teacher-student relationship, manage their classroom, and collaborate with other, other professionals and parents. And in the student selection process, we concentrate on interpersonal skills. And we hope to educate professionals who cope with the demands of everyday life of, uh, of teachers. And in the selection process, we focus on psychological adjustments. And our hope is to educate professionals who respond to the changing needs of school and teaching profession and the challenges of lifelong continuing learning. And in respect to that, we uh, in the selection process, we uh, look at the motivation and orientations to towards the professional development. The personality, personality questionnaires in the student selections measure their relatively stable tendencies to behave, think, and feel, and they provide reali reliable means to eliminate applicants who have traits that are counterproductive to teaching. These treat all the applicants quite equally and they are cost effective because we have quite many applicants. We need to also think about that, that theme. We have interviews that eliminate the clearly unsuitable candidates and it offers a real life information about the ap applicants interpersonal skills motivation and reasons for applying to the teacher education this interview is done by two of our professionals members of our faculty and it takes 15 minutes per applicant so it's not very deep interview but gives the general overview we have this application process going on. Students are, uh, applicants are studying for the Akava, Vakava examination that is take place in May. And we have the interviews and uh, aptitudes test in the beginning of June. And students get the information by July if they, got, if they are accepted to our pro programs. There are many tiers and approximately four, five percentage of applicants are very happy to get a position in, in our teacher education programs. I have been asked why young people want to be teachers. And in certain studies, we have found out that it's the fulfillment of the moral mission. 
they have this deep inside mission that they want to help students. They uh, even say that they want to make the world a better place for our children and for our young people. Also, the autonomy is appreciated and our teachers have quite much time to spend on teaching. Of course, the administrative work have increased, but still it's not uh, such a heavy thing than, for example, in US. And young people also think that the possibility to deliver, de develop one works and abil abilities is one reason to choose the teacher's career. I wrote that the salary is not the motivator, uh, and here you can see the average average uh, salaries compared to UK, USA, Korea, and OECD average. So teacher salaries are not very high, but not very low either. It's somewhere in between. You can manage, but you are not rich. <laughs> And here you can see the teaching hours per year compared to USA, Korea, and OECD average. So teaching load is not so heavy, and teachers, at least in theory, have time to develop their own work, time to discuss with colleagues, and time to, uh, for example, for evaluation processes and so on. So to sum up, Finnish teachers are highly trusted professionals in pedagogy and all have training at the university le level. Our teachers have master's degree. Kindergarten teachers can have the bachelor degrees. This training is academic and research-based and perhaps this academic profession is one reason for the high popularity of the profession. And because there is so many applicants, we can choose the highly motivated and multi-talented students into our teacher education programs. And culture of trust and autonomy, these are two themes or facts that can be found in all of our educational system, including the teacher education programs. After the break, I will tell you how we proceed, how we develop our teacher education, and how we give even more autonomy to our teacher students to develop their own skills and their own professionality in teacher, teacher's profession. So what do you think? Do we have a time for a short break now? I think we have had quite a lot of information load so far. Um, if we have 10 minutes break, will you promise to come back on time? <laughs> if you don't promise, I won't let you out. <laughs> okay, agreed? 10 minutes. Thank you. That are my next slides. So these are these are the ones that you've already used. Yes. These are the new ones. These are the new ones. Give me one second. Yes. So that I can share the presentations with the teachers because they've been taking photos and they're worried that they don't have your presentation. So I converted I converted everything into a PDF and I put them in a that is fine so they don't need to get distracted. And start be worried because they can have all the materials. Yes. I already converted them into, so I'm just going to leave the slide there for whenever they get back. They can take a picture of the link and then download the information from the Dropbox. I need to remember to say that in, after the course.
Thank you for coming back. Uh, in the next session, we are going to take a peek to the future and to discuss about the perspectives to development of teacher, Finnish teacher education. We have a strong history in teacher education, more than 150 years. We have many strengths. We have wonderful teachers, very good quality teacher education, but we also face challenges, as I believe all, all countries, all educational system face uh, some challenges. Here I have listed some of our challenges. One is the culture of working alone. That is the side back of teacher strong autonomy. According to many, many research, Finnish teachers do not get support from colleagues or do not discuss with uh, principals about the pedagogical solutions. It used to be that teacher had, the, had his or her own class. She put the door closed and spent the time with the children. But nowadays, the, days the oper operational culture is uh, changing. Yesterday we heard that our children do not enjoy being, being at school. And one reason for that is that link between the knowledge learned at school and the non-formal learning is not very strong. Uh, teenagers think that they are not, using, uh, not learning the skills needed in their everyday life, so that needs to be changed. And for example, using the tablets, using internet, social uh, networks, our students don't think that that is learning. And for me, that is very much learning, but they are learning different skills than in the school classes. And the question is how we can uh, change the situation, make the school more meaningful to our students. And I believe the information overload is known by every educational systems because we all the time have more and more information and we try to put it on, uh, on our curriculums and we need to learn how to drop out some things in our curriculum and uh, take more elements of the aesthetics, elements of emo emotionals, more elements of creativity and so on. And we need to learn how to use ICT pedagogically meaningful in our learning situations. Teenagers use tablets and cellular phones in their amusement, but not so much in school and learning purposes. And the situation now is this. We are currently preparing students for the job, jobs and technologies that doesn't not yet exist. In order to solve problems that we, we don't even know are problems yet. And this is the really relevant situation in Finland. We do not know what the future is and we should uh, educate our young people for that world not the world of yesterday, not the world of today, but to the future. And that is why we are facing these questions. Do we have the world's best new school in Finland? Or do we have the world's best old school in Finland? And I think that in order to have the world's best new school, we need to change our educational system. We, ne we need to change uh, the operational cultures of the school. Do you have the similar situation here in Colombia? If you agree, please raise your thumbs. Yes, somebody said that it's worse. But that shows that we have similar kind of problems and I hope that we can collaborate in finding the solutions because they are not so different. People are people everywhere. 
although our political systems and educational system are different, we have the similar kind of problems. And our government has waken up to this problem. And next I will tell how at the national level we are developing our education and teacher education. This is the vision described by our government. In year 2025, Finland is renewable, caring and safe country in which every one of us can feel that he or she is important, and in our society there is trust at all levels. And I think that's quite well put. Especially I like the fact that in our society, each and every one of us can feel that he or she is important. And if we keep that in mind in our education, we help our students to grow to their full potential. Key areas of focus in the government's program is employment and competitiveness, skills and educational training, well-being and health, bioeconomic, uh, bioeconomic and clean solutions, uh, and digitalization, experimentation, and dismantling of the norms. And yesterday I know that besides education, bioeconomic and clean solutions are something that Finland and Colombia can have uh, uh, mutual collaborations and we can help each other in these facts. The vision for the skills and educational training focus area is that Finland is the country where people always want to learn something new. Not only when you are a child, but always want to learn something new. The level of Finnish people's skills and education has risen, which in turn supports the reform of Finnish society and equality of opportunities. Finland ranks among amongst the highest in education, skills, and modern learning. And that is what we are going to be. And for that, we need some international cooperation and support also from others, because I believe that when we benchmark our educational system, each and every one of us can learn. The objectives is that our learning environments have been modernized, the opportunities offered by digitalization and new pedagogy are utilized in teaching. And this is the challenge also in our teacher education. And the number of young people that are not in education or employment has decreased, and the number of school dropouts has fallen. I told that there is less than one percentage of young people who are not going through the basic education, but in the nation that is so small than Finland is, it's too many young people outside the educational system. We can't afford it because our heads, our minds, our knowledge is the best resources that fin Finland can have. Also, we hope and we want that interaction between education and working life and increased and the quality and impact of research and innovation activities have begun to rise. We, in teacher education, and especially in Uvascular, we do a lot of research, but we still need to push for forward. We need to have more international research and research that help was the culture of trust. Each and everyone trusted the colleague that you know what you are saying, and I appreciate your knowledge, and this is my expertise, and I trust that you value my knowledge. Uh, as a head of department, and the Matti Kuorelahti, the other head of the educational department, we supported the agency and cooperat cooperation of our uh, staff. We g gave them a lot of uh, freedom. We trusted that they really know what they are doing. We, as head of depart departments, we didn't have to know better 
because they are the experts, not us. So there was this kind of bottom-up approach in this process. It was structured. We gave our staff certain dates that by that day we need to have this structure ready or this needs to be negotiated. But otherwise we didn't in get involved too much in the process. And as I already uh, told students were involved in the, in the process as experts. Each of this group had at least one student member. And actually, we got a lot of valuable information and they really challenged us to change our, our current way of doing things. We have a phenomena-based curriculum in teacher education, and that is only the case in Uvascula. Some other universities are starting to move towards this curriculum-based, uh, phenomena-based curriculum, but we were the first, and I think this was something really thinking boldly. We actually did something that no one else have ever done. And we are studying phenomena and trying to conceptualize them using various theoretical uh, viewpoints. And the questions come from the real life. And that is one reason we put our teacher students to face the reality of teaching, the reality of uh, uh, interaction in the classroom and uh, operational cultures of schools, they can find the real questions from there. The questions are not given by professors, but teacher students need to find them, find the questions by themselves. And if we teach them this way in, during their studies, we believe that when they are teachers, they are able to find correct questions uh, during their everyday working life. Um, This involves that also emotions are taken into consideration and we have the pr practical contact with the phenomena. And they are not always very easy processes because, for example, mm, one, this is just one example, but one teacher student has faced bullying during his um, basic education and we at the time that he is now teacher student, he got very emotional when she saw bullying in one, uh, one school. And that was very good um, place to stop and discuss. What did you see? What is the phenomena behind bullying? What can be done? What is the responsibility of teacher? What is the responsibility of uh, teacher colleagues? And what is the... Pre uh, responsibility of principle and so on. So in a way, we can learn authentic problems and theoretize them and also uh, deal with the emotions. This is one description of phenomena. It is something that happens or exists in society, science or nature, especially something that is studied because it is difficult to understand. And this is not our description, it's taken from the dictionary, but we share the idea of this kind of uh, description. And our thesis in our education is that an in-depth study of few phenomena in education processes uh, brought a broad understanding of education. We don't need to study many small subjects, but our uh, view is a holistic approach of few important phenomena. And that is the reason that uh, the curriculum doesn't have to contain all important theories and topics. We need to learn to focus uh, on what is really important 
and put aside something that is not so relevant. And that is a decision to make. It's not easy decision and we can argue, we can discuss, we can negotiate, but these are the five phenomena that is important at the moment. As you can see, these are the very same that early childhood education and care curriculum had. Just describing that the, all the curriculums in our faculty have the similar kind of uh, phenomena-based approach. And next I will tell you something about our principles. One of our principles is that we put learner at the center. We are changing the focus from teaching to learning and from class focus to learner focus. And we think that this approach of one size fits uh, everyone doesn't exist because one size doesn't fit anyone. So we want this kind of diversific diversification of education. I already told you about this home group approach. So our curriculum is very flexible. If a student needs to learn something that our curriculum allows it. And if the, there is some project, some interesting project going on, our students can go uh, and mm, take part in that and we can include that as a, as a part of the teacher education program. We believe if we support students to become inspired and enthusiastic and learning from others and sharing learning, that is the goal that we are going towards. It's so nice to see this kind of motivation that comes from inside, not outside. And you are really interested about other people's opinions and you la want to learn from other person. And you are also willing to share your knowledge. And that is something I believe quite new in our educational system, at least at, in teacher's room, because the, the, the culture is not so that teachers are sharing ideas so much. We want to support this kind of exchange of ideas. So we think that from individual work to the community learning is one of our approaches. We want to create teaching communities, not in a way that teachers continue working alone. We hope them to connect to each other inside one school, uh, between schools, and social media allows this kind of interaction also in uh, global contexts. We want to support the idea that school is a learning community not only students are learning, but also teachers are learning. Next one. This one? I'm talking about this one. Thank you. This is very difficult. I have to guess a lot. Um, okay, but the <laughs> if we want to move towards community learning, there must be times, places, and operational models. And for example, in our teacher education department, uh, our educators, uh, teacher educators told that we wish to do collaboration with other, le other lecturers. We wish to share our ideas, but we don't have time. And we heard that quite many years, and then we decided to create time for this kind of collaboration. And the way that we create time is that we said that, okay, Tuesdays from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., you are not allowed to teach. That time is for communal time. That time is for sharing, developing, creating together. And all the lessons were still taught we took the Monday mornings and Friday afternoons uh, 
uh, more in use. But the most valuable time, the Tuesday time, was for communal thinking, mutual development, doing research, and so on. That was perhaps the best decision that I have made as the head of department, because now we have so many projects. Mm, lecturers are doing work together. They are integrating different subjects. They are creating new courses, new ways of uh, educating our teacher students. So we are changing our view from subjects to phenomena. That is not to say that subjects are not important. They are a tool to understand the phenomena. And we all also need to understand the nature of, for example, science, the nature of uh, music, and also understand the basic elements, for example, in natural sciences. Sometimes it is said that universities and teacher educators are not very well connected to society. So that was something that we wanted to develop. And we decided that the contents and methods must have a social relevance. We have developed the continuous interaction amongst various social actors. We are creating new partnerships and new ways of operating. Not only with the schools, but also other members of society. As we are part of university, research has very important role. There are strong li link between experiments and research, and also our teacher students are involved in our research projects. And some of them will continue to have their PhD studies. And we believe that this is the way to develop education and create new kinds of ed educational methods. We need to integrate research in order to do uh, good, good solutions. Then something about the methods that we are developing our staff, the staff developing strate strategies. I mentioned this Tuesday reform that uh, gave time to in in increase collaboration and cooperation. It was pro prohibited to teach normally. If you had some experimentation, then you were allowed to teach on Tuesdays. We had quite many meetings, and they were not very good ones. People thought that it's a waste of time sitting in auditoriums and uh, not interacting with each other. So we changed from these administrative meetings into the developmental days. Uh, if, I, if I, as a head of department, have some news, I can use social media or other means of communication, and people don't need to gather, gather to hear some basic information. They can gather together to create something new. Uh, we have teacher teams. We don't have many courses anymore that is taught by one teacher, but teams of teacher. And I think that is the best way of uh, developing your own understanding and your own professionality to learn from others in your own working place. And physical working environment, unfortunately, not all of you are able to come to Uvascula and see our new Ruusupuisto building, but for example, one of these uh, areas, we have, for example, I don't have my own room. I share a room with six other, per five other persons. And on the other side of this space, there is working places for 19, 18 people. We are packed together very closely, 
and the code is that you are not allowed to speak in these areas but we have a huge base of this kind of social working it's just wonderful when you go to work you can decide whether I want to sit on my desk whether I want to go to the couch do I have small meetings in our uh, cubicle there can be perhaps three or four small meetings at the same time and nobody is disturbed I just love it and I hope that you can come and see what kind of physical environment supports collaboration because I have noticed that I talk to people so much more than when I sat on my own office do you have a lot of uh, solo rooms, rooms for one person at the university. Who has own room or shared room? Office, office, yes. Quite many have own office. Hmm. Would you like to change your physical working environment in a, in a way that it supports collaboration? Okay, this is the last few slides. Maybe you have the patience to hear and then we have discussion. I told that we need, needed to change the way we, ma we are managing or leading our fac uh, faculty. We are creating collective leadership practices in a way that we hope to support the professional agency of the personnel, giving them more responsibility, trusting them. They are the experts. We just create them opportunities to work at their best. And also we build leaders, collecti collective agency. I have four, uh, sorry, three wonderful colleagues that I work with daily, on a daily basis. I couldn't do this work on my own. I need their expertise, and of course they need my expertise, but we are a team of leaders. I have a wise head, um, head for research and pedagogical head, and together we are a team who takes care of uh, developing our staff and developing our educational processes. This picture is from one of our articles that we are writing, it's in preparation and it, it will be published in a book hope, hopefully this year. Uh, and in that research we, fo we found that the most important new collective leadership, leadership practices are that we, we build a team in which we, we get emotional support from each other because it's not very easy to be head of teacher the head of teacher education education departments because there are so many demands if you are able to discuss with your colleagues and how to say release the emo emotional burden the job is much easier and much more joyful uh, together we can more easily identify challenges and address critical voices and acute problems and together we can find solutions to the problems and of was the culture of trust each and everyone trusted the colleague that you know what you are saying and I appreciate your knowledge and this is my expertise and I trust that you value my knowledge uh, as a head of department and the Matti Kuorelahti, the other head of the educational department, we supported the agency and cooperat cooperation of our uh, staff. We g gave them a lot of uh, freedom. We trusted that they really know what they are doing. We, as head of depart departments, we didn't have to know better because they are the experts, not us. So there was this kind of 
bottom-up approach in this process. It was structured. We gave our staff certain dates that by that day we need to have this structure ready or this need to be negotiated. But otherwise we didn't in get involved too much in the process. And as I already uh, told students were involved in the, in the process as experts. Each of this group had at least one student member. And actually, we got a lot of valuable information and they really challenged us to change our, our current way of doing things. We have a phenomena-based curriculum in teacher education, and that is only the case in Uvascula. Some other universities are starting to move towards this curriculum-based, uh, phenomena-based curriculum, but we were the first, and I think this was something really thinking boldly. We actually did something that no one else have ever done. And we are studying phenomena and trying to conceptualize them using various theoretical uh, viewpoints. And the questions come from the real life. And that is one reason we put our teacher students to face the reality of teaching, the reality of uh, uh, interaction in the classroom and uh, operational cultures of schools, they can find the real questions from there. The questions are not given by professors, but teacher students need to find them, find the questions by themselves. And if we teach them this way in, during their studies, we believe that when they are teachers, they are able to find correct questions uh, during their everyday working life. Um, This involves that also emotions are taken into consideration and we have the pr practical contact with the phenomena. And they are not always very easy processes because, for example, mm, one, this is just one example, but one teacher student has faced bullying during his um, basic education and we at the time that he is now teacher student, he got very emotional when she saw bullying in one, uh, one school. And that was very good um, place to stop and discuss. What did you see? What is the phenomena behind bullying? What can be done? What is the responsibility of teacher? What is the responsibility of uh, teacher colleagues? And what is the... Pre uh, responsibility of principle and so on. So in a way, we can learn authentic problems and theoretize them and also uh, deal with the emotions. This is one description of phenomena. It is something that happens or exists in society, science or nature, especially something that is studied because it is difficult to understand. And this is not our description, it's taken from the dictionary, but we share the idea of this kind of uh, description. And our thesis in our education is that an in-depth study of few phenomena in education processes uh, brought a broad understanding of education. We don't need to study many small subjects, but our uh, view is a holistic approach of few important phenomena. And that is the reason that uh, the curriculum doesn't have to contain all important theories and topics. We need to learn to focus uh, on what is really important and put aside something that is not so relevant. And that is 
a decision to make. It's not easy decision, and we can argue, we can discuss, we can negotiate, but these are the five phenomena that is important at the moment. As you can see, these are the very same that early childhood education and care curriculum had. Just describing that the, all the curriculums in our faculty have the similar kind of uh, phenomena-based approach. And next I will tell you something about our principles. One of our principles is that we put learner at the center. We are changing the focus from teaching to learning and from class focus to learner focus. And we think that this approach of one size fits uh, everyone doesn't exist because one size doesn't fit anyone. So we want this kind of diversifi diversification of education. I already told you about this home group approach. So our curriculum is very flexible. If a student needs to learn something that our curriculum allows it. And if there, there is some project, some interesting project going on, our students can go uh, and mm, take part in that and we can include that as a, as a part of the teacher education program. We believe if we support students to become inspired and enthusiastic and learning from others and sharing learning, that is the goal that we are going towards. It's so nice to see this kind of motivation that comes from inside, not outside. And you are really interested about other people's opinions and you la want to learn from other person. And you are also willing to share your knowledge. And that is something I believe quite new in our educational system, at least at, in teachers' room, because the, the, the culture is not so that teachers are sharing ideas so much. We want to support this kind of exchange of ideas. So we think that from individual work to the community learning is one of our approaches. We want to create teaching communities, not in a way that teachers continue working alone. We hope them to connect to each other inside one school, uh, between schools, and social media allows this kind of interaction also in uh, global contexts. We want to support the idea that school is a learning community not only students are learning, but also teachers are learning. Next one. This one? I'm talking about this one. Thank you. This is very difficult. I have to guess a lot. Um, okay, but the <laughs> if we want to move towards community learning, there must be times, places, and operational models. And for example, in our teacher education department, uh, our educators, uh, teacher educators told that we wish to do collaboration with other, le other lecturers. We wish to share our ideas, but we don't have time. And we heard that quite many years, and then we decided to create time for this kind of collaboration. And the way that we create time is that we said that, okay, Tuesdays from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m., you are not allowed to teach. That time is for communal time. That time is for sharing, developing, creating together. And all the lessons were still taught we took the Monday mornings and Friday afternoons uh, more in use. 
but the most valuable time, the Tuesday time, was for communal thinking, mutual development, doing research, and so on. That was perhaps the best decision that I have made as the head of department, because now we have so many projects. Mm, lecturers are doing work together. They are integrating different subjects. They are creating new courses, new ways of uh, educating our teacher students. So we are changing our view from subjects to phenomena. That is not to say that subjects are not important. They are a tool to understand the phenomena. And we all also need to understand the nature of, for example, science, the nature of uh, music, and also understand the basic elements, for example, in natural sciences. Sometimes it is said that universities and teacher educators are not very well connected to society. So that was something that we wanted to develop. And we decided that the contents and methods must have a social relevance. We have developed the continuous interaction amongst various social actors. We are creating new partnerships and new ways of operating. Not only with the schools, but also other members of society. As we are part of university, research has very important role. There are strong li link between experiments and research, and also our teacher students are involved in our research projects. And some of them will continue to have their PhD studies. And we believe that this is the way to develop education and create new kinds of ed educational methods. We need to integrate research in order to do uh, good, good solutions. Then something about the methods that we are developing our staff, the staff developing strate strategies. I mentioned this Tuesday reform that uh, gave time to in in increase collaboration and cooperation. It was pro prohibited to teach normally. If you had some experimentation, then you were allowed to teach on Tuesdays. We had quite many meetings, and they were not very good ones. People thought that it's a waste of time sitting in auditoriums and uh, not interacting with each other. So we changed from these administrative meetings into the developmental days. Uh, if, I, if I, as a head of department, have some news, I can use social media or other means of communication, and people don't need to gather, gather to hear some basic information. They can gather together to create something new. Uh, we have teacher teams. We don't have many courses anymore that is taught by one teacher, but teams of teacher. And I think that is the best way of uh, developing your own understanding and your own professionality to learn from others in your own working place. And physical working environment, unfortunately, not all of you are able to come to Uvascula and see our new Ruusupuisto building, but for example, one of these uh, areas, we have, for example, I don't have my own room. I share a room with six other, per five other persons. And on the other side of this space, there is working places for 19, 18 people. We are packed together very closely, and the 
code is that you are not allowed to speak in these areas, but we have a huge base of this kind of social working. It's just wonderful when you go to work, you can decide whether I want to sit on my desk, whether I want to go to the couch, do I have small meetings in our uh, cubicle. There can be perhaps three or four small meetings at the same time and nobody is disturbed. I just love it and I hope that you can come and see what kind of physical environment supports collaboration. Because I have noticed that I talk to people so much more than when I sat on my own office. Do you have a lot of uh, solo rooms, rooms for one person at the university? Who has own room or shared room? Office, office, yes. Quite many have own office. Hmm. Would you like to change your physical working environment in a, in a way that it supports collaboration? Okay, this is the last few slides. Maybe you have the patience to hear and then we have discussion. I told that we need, needed to change the way we Ma we are managing or leading our fac uh, faculty. We are creating collective leadership practices in a way that we hope to support the professional agency of the personnel, giving them more responsibility, trusting them. They are the experts. We just create them opportunities to work at their best. And also we build leaders, collecti collective agency. I have four, uh, sorry, three wonderful colleagues that I work with daily, on a daily basis. I couldn't do this work on my own. I need their expertise, and of course they need my expertise, but we are a team of leaders. I have a wise head, um, head for research and pedagogical head and together we are a team who takes care of uh, developing our staff and developing our educational processes. This picture is from one of our articles that we are writing. It's in preparation and it, it will be published in a book, hope, hopefully this year. Uh, and in that research we, fo we found that the most important new collective leadership leadership practices are that we, we build a team in which we, we get emotional support from each other because it's not very easy to be head of teacher, the head of teacher education, education departments because there are so many demands. If you are able to discuss with your colleagues and how to say release the emo emotional burden, the job is much easier and much more joyful. Uh, together, we can more easily identify challenges and address critical voices and acute problems. And together, we can find solutions to the problems. And of course, we need these uh, structural changes and new practices. And the Tuesday, Teaching Free Tuesday was one of the best that we have ever made. Um, levels of interaction in the community is something that we really hope to develop. The changing ideas is one level, but we are not satisfied with that. Uh, we hope to get to the point that we are creating the new together. We are actually doing something more than we can alone do. And we have still a work to do, but we are going towards 
this kind of uh, interactive community of teacher educators and teacher students. Quite many slides, quite many topics have been covered, and I think now it's time for the discussion, for the questions, and for the comments. I would really value comments and ideas how also we can develop our uh, community and our educational system. I really want to thank you for your patience, and I hope really uh, interactive discussion and Emilia would you be so kind and come and help me with the questions because I'm uh, the this machine is sometimes you know making this strange voice <laughs> like <laughs> and I believe it's not what you want to say so thank you and let's go to the questions Eh, muy buenos días. Me gustaría de pronto que nos dieran un poco más de idea de ideas sobre el bilingüismo, que nos dieran un poco más de pautas en mi caso particular, eh, la importancia de aprender lenguas extranjeras y cómo hacen este proceso, es decir, al, al menos por ejemplo el aprendizaje del inglés, toda la gente maneja el inglés 100% o es básicamente finlandés o la importancia de que los profesores utilicen, por ejemplo, el inglés. Para nosotros particularmente es muy importante el inglés y el gobierno lo promueve muchísimo. Quisiera conocer un poco más sobre esa perspectiva en Finlandia. Muchas gracias. Is this working? Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Yes, all of our pupils learn English at the elementary school uh, and also Swedish because Swedish is the other official language uh, in Finland. Uh, they start to learn English when they are at the third grade and the Swedish they can choose when they are at the fifth grade. Our students, well, pupils can also choose French, Germany, Spain, Ru Spanish, uh, Russia, 
and so on. But the most, uh, all of them are learning English. And when they come to teach you education, uh, we can support them by giving them minor subject in uh, so-called Juliet group. It's um, academic. academic English and it also mm, gives our teacher students methods to teach by using English. It's not only studying English but pedagogy in teaching using foreign language. <coughs> Not all of our teacher students take this minor subject, but they, are ha they have possibility to, to do. And also in this multidisciplinary studies, which is the other minor study, we have elements in teaching foreign language, but it's not very many hours that we are using to do that. Somehow we try to support the Le language learning process at the elementary school and even younger. Our government have decided that uh, our pupils start learning foreign language at the age of seven years. And the focus is on learning through play and using the language as, a, um, how to say, not, use, not learning the structure or grammar, but by uh, interaction and by communicating with others. Okay. No, no, we don't have. Sí, el, eh, las categorías de nivel de, de dominio de, de una lengua extranjera um, entran en juego a la entrada al mundo laboral o a estudios superiores, pero en, en cuanto a, um, a los objetivos de aprendizaje en la enseñanza básica y en la, en, en la enseñanza media están dentro del currículo finlandés. No, no atienden a, a la categorización europea. Pero, por ejemplo, el, el nivel exigido en la enseñanza media es un nivel muy alto y, por ejemplo, ninguna de nosotras dos ha estudiado más inglés de lo que aprendimos en la enseñanza media y después practicándolo. Sí. En, um, también quisiera puntualizar que en, en, la, actuali en la actualidad de entre um, las, las lenguas extranjeras elegibles, el español es el más solicitado por, por delante del uh, francés y, eh, y el alemán y ruso, chino. Eh, hay mucho interés en Finlandia por aprender la, la lengua española. And after visiting Kali, I want to learn some Spanish. I need to learn. <laughs> yes, and about mm, our university is supporting also teaching in foreign language. It offers our teaching sta staff this kind of teaching module for, uh, I believe it's 10 or 15 credits and gives um, tools how to teach our foreign students and also our uh, own students by using English. And this is because we really need and really want to make international connections also uh, in the group of students. Aparte de esto, eh, muchos docentes finlandeses han, de, de la enseñanza básica y media han recibido formación en, en lo que en inglés se llama Content and Language Integrated Learning. En, en español sería algo como eh, aprendizaje de lengua y contenido integrados. Es decir, en, en una clase se está aprendiendo a la vez 
um, alguna materia, podría ser historia, podría ser alguna asignatura de ciencias naturales y a la vez se está aprendiendo inglés u otro, otro idioma, por ejemplo, eh, eh, expresarse sobre cierta temática en ese idioma que se está aprendiendo. Normalmente ese idioma es el inglés, pero el método podría ser totalmente aplicable a, al aprendizaje del, del español o del francés, siempre y cuando eh, el, el docente o, o un equipo de docentes que ha planificado la clase eh, sabe integrar ambos aprendizajes. Y esto sí es algo, algo muy común y no, ya no es algo... Entró en los años 90, entonces está bastante establecido ya. Y, pero depende de los docentes, algunos lo, lo aplican, otros, otros no. Pero, y es algo bastante extendido en Europa este método CLIL. Hi. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for embarking on this strategic improvement plan, even though you have great results and such reputation worldwide, because I strongly believe that if you stop improving, you stop being good, so that's wonderful. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on what happens on during those Tuesday meetings. I think it's such a luxury to have that time. Um, So I'm wondering if there's a specific structure, if there are protocols, how does that collaboration actually happen? That is a good question. Thank you for that. Because that was something that we discussed when we decided this, this Tuesday. Some of our staff said that you need to give us structure, you need to give us topics, how to proceed. But we say that no, we are going to We are not going to do that because our staff knows what to do N in a way that, for example, some teams need time to uh, develop some common cause. Some uh, groups need time to uh, make research, collect data, analyze data, or write journal articles. Uh, some groups go to the schools make observations, have developmental projects. And we didn't even define what is a group. They decided that themselves. And some of our staff were really worried that what I'm going to do, what we are going to do, we are wasting time. But nowadays, Tuesdays are so full of meetings, developmental discussions that we need that whether we should have an other day that we forbid teaching, for example, Wednesday. But that's, it's not possible in reality. But it shows that trusting our personnel and trusting the process of bottom-up development really works. For some of our members, it was difficult uh, in, the, at the end, uh, in the beginning. But for those we supported, we, as a head of department, I had s few discussions, showed them to the way, for example, this could, could be important project or interesting project for you. And nowadays I don't need to be involved in Tuesdays at all. I, I'm practically having meetings all the time because people have time to discuss with me and have uh, to meet me. But it's wonderful. You can try it. Do you think that you could have that same level of autonomy at the school level, with teachers at the school level and at, at the university level? Now it's working. Yes, I personally believe that it could happen also in schools. And we have really good ex examples already in Finland. For example, uh, Rita Harjokoulu. You can Google it and it has wonderful YouTube videos of uh, doing things in teams. Those team ha teams have, for example, two hours time to do 
um, things that are important for them. And for different themes, it is different discussions. For others, it is the pedagogical approaches, and for others, it might be some structural, structural discussions. But I believe that teachers, when trusted, they can use the autonomy also in very good ways. But we, we need to support the collegial approach for this, this kind of um, operational culture. En, en la presentación, ustedes hacen énfasis en el apoyo emocional a los profesores. ¿Cómo se apoya este, este desarrollo emocional para ellos? I discuss with my staff a lot. For, for example, at the moment we are having developmental discussions and we are not only focusing on what you should do, we are focusing on how you should do and how does it feel. Uh, there has been many tears in those discussions and they are not tears of that I say, you are doing wrong. But for example, one, one of our lecturers said that uh, we discussed about the group relations in that, in her group. And she was able to put in words the emotional load that he or she has felt for years. So I believe that the only way to give emotional support is to talk, 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 and really be human to human, not only the boss and staff member, but to be interested, how are you today and how can I help you to do your job better? Here. I uh, would like to thank you for taking the time and share your uh, knowledge and your experiences with us. I'm a mathematician. I work in the mathematical science department. I do research. and. Um, my question is in this direction. Um, what would you say if there is any s relationship between doing research and going to the classroom and share your research with your students? Is there um, a balance that you think it's, it's the best or uh, do you think there should be professors dedicated only to do research and the others only doing uh, teaching? Uh, do you have any experience on that? Do you actually allow researchers to do teaching and bring the research to your students. Thank you. All researchers are doing at least some teaching and all our teachers are doing research in the way or the other. Not all are writing uh, scientific journals, but they are participating in research projects one way or the other. And I cannot see teacher education that is divided to the researchers and to the educators, because our teacher education is research-based, and the methods of research have to be in the classroom, and the research res results have to be used in teaching. So uh, the division is not very clear. We don't have, for example, percentages that professor have to teach uh, or she has to teach. Uh, usually it goes in a way that what is her or his expertise, uh, those are the areas of teaching that uh, he, she or he will do. And for example, one of our university teachers, typically university teacher is mainly teaching, but for example, this wonderful young university teacher has created such a nice research, um, 
was it, a research setting that she is using in the uh, in one of his uh, her courses, and he she will be reporting those results in national conference, and I believe that those are su such a good results that she will go to the international conferences also. Uh, that she doesn't have such skills in writing scientific, uh, scientific texts or making very difficult uh, analyses, but one of our uh, members who is more involved in research is helping her in that process. So in a way, this is also a collaborative project, and they both are um, getting something and giving something and learning from each other. Thanks. Bueno, eh, quería felicitarles, soy Adelaida Gómez, por este modelo, por este trabajo, por este aporte, pero tengo algunas inquietudes. Mi trabajo eh, es en la Universidad del Valle, básicamente he trabajado por 27 años como docente y la parte curricular de formación de médicos, enfermeras, fisioterapeutas. Me inquietan varias cosas y quería preguntarles para ver si me podrían aclarar. Para Lacan en el estudio del espejo se encarna que tú eres no solo el fruto de la sociedad, sino el espejo del ejemplo que te rodea. Entonces me preocupa si las horas con el docente, las horas con sus padres son pocas, ¿cómo está este espejo? Siendo la semiótica médica la que aporta los principios en gran parte de salud, vida y ética a las personas, este constructo teórico que cómo se plantea en el currículum para garantizar que este estudiante tenga un desempeño social y sea evidente en él los principios de honradez, respeto y todos los otros? Esa es una primera pregunta. La segunda, perdón, es si el currículum es construcción colectiva, no veo ahí el saber, la tradición y la historia y el aporte de los académicos mayores está así como centrado en la innovación juvenil y en el gusto tecnológico juvenil, es una inquietud. La tercera es si el currículum ha tenido algún, en algún momento evaluación y cómo están los índices de los egresados frente a drogadicción, delincuencia, huida del país y otros. Gracias. Thank you for the good questions. Our students work independently, but they, the main way of working is group. They are, the group is working independently, are reflecting. Ethical and moral questions together. And of course, they are not left alone, our professors, our lecturers are supporting them, giving them questions, trying to help them to find the good, um, re the relevant questions. So, mm, really see that as a big problem in our educational culture because it is based on trust and autonomy, and we are giving them tools to reflect their own behavior in in relations to both theory and practice. And you ask if we have assessed our curriculum. We are right now doing it. We are assessing 
uh, as a lecturers, we are asking st uh, our st teacher students how they perceive it, perceive it, and we are also involving the uh, society, the schools, at, at what kind of experiences do they have. The change has been huge, and I'm not going to say that everything is just fine. We are going to some some improvements to our curriculum, and we also need to improve our own behavior because it is very difficult to change the way you are teaching and interacting with the students. And one of my guesses is that after this assessment, we find that we still need to give more freedom to our students, but at the ti same time support their learning processes in a way to be available for them, for their questions. We, know we don't need to lecture, lecture them, we need to be, uh, we need to have discussions with them more and more and to support their learning process and how to say, make it visible so that they by themselves see what kind of difficulties they are facing in their own, own learning processes. Yes, the other question was about experienced professors and their input for, the, for this um, curriculum. We have quite many really valued experienced professors and they are also involved in this process and th as a part of our staff they were involved but we, they were not in charge. And I see there a slight difference. They, everybody could give their best knowledge, best expertise in the process, and it was valued. We are not throwing all the good things into the trash, but we are building on the strengths that we have in a slightly different ways. For example, ICT is one of our areas that we need to develop. Mm, and that's a challenge for the staff because our teacher students are much more knowledgeable in using the devices, but they do not know how to use it pedagogically meaningful ways. And th this is one area that we need to collaborate. We need to uh, join our expertise, the pedagogical knowledge that our professors have and the technical knowledge that our students have. But yes, we really value the expertise of our professors, the younger ones and also the a little bit older ones. El, el sistema finlandés, el sistema educativo finlandés, ¿cómo garantiza que los egresados de las facultades de educación accedan al trabajo? En nuestro país, eh, muchos, muchas personas eh, terminan sus licenciaturas y nunca pueden ingresar al sistema educativo a ser maestros, mientras que otros que nunca eh, estudiaron para ser maestros, a través de una evaluación que se hace, llegan al sistema educativo sin haberse preparado para ello. The unemployment among teachers is not very high. Uh, if you are a young teacher, you do not get a permanent position right away, usually, but you get this kind of um, I like, um, temporary positions. 
the reason that the unemployment is not very high is that the Ministry of Culture and Education give, um, estimates how many teachers do we need in mathematics, in history, class teachers and so on. They calculate how many teachers are retiring, how many teachers are changing jobs. That is not very common, by the way. And it gives the universities a teacher education program places. So, for example, uh, we are educating around 140 class teachers. And we are not allowed to teach uh, educate more because there is no need for excess. And I, I believe that system is really nice because after getting the teacher uh, degree, you most probably get a job. It's not guaranteed, but you have a good possibility to, to find a job. And even if you, uh, if you want to move to Helsinki area, you most probably get a job as a class teacher. And if you have... Um, a diploma in special education, you most definitely have a job. Perhaps not permanent, but at least temporary one. And if you are willing to move, for example, to Lapland, there are vacancies open for class teachers and subject teachers also. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, I got a question. I would like to know what is the role of philosophy and music in uh, Finnish education, especially in a world where, where uh, we can find that uh, these uh, just subjects, they are not uh, productive. One of the areas in our class teacher education is educational philosophy. You cannot see in our current curriculum, but it used to be a theme uh, in the older curriculum. We hasn't rejected it, but it comes nowadays through these, through these phenomena. All of our teacher students have some courses in music. For example, in multidisciplinary studies, we have a pedagogy of music and they can improve their musical skills. And in, in our class teacher and also in subject teacher education, we really value the mm, artistic creativity and so on. Um, it's uh, sad that in our basic education, the role of arts, the role of music has been declining. It used to have a big, bigger role, but I believe that these uh, integrative subjects uh, give more room for creativity, more room for art, more room for music. And I believe that, uh, for example, music and arts are the basic for supporting the growth as a holistic person. We need to also emphasize not only the cognitive side of human, but also the emo emotional and creative side of human. So it, it's very important part of teacher education at the moment. Thank you for the very good questions and thank you for sharing this morning time to me with me and with Emilia. I, I really value and appreciate your time and your very, very good questions. Thank you and have a wonderful time today, tomorrow. And please, sometimes visit Finland. You are most welcome to visit also Jyväskylä. Buen, buen resto de día.
buen resto de día para todos y todas y les reitero la invitación mañana a las 2 y 30 en este mismo espacio para el tema de docencia universitaria. Que, 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 que su deseo es que la gente recibiera no, ideas. Sí, creo que fue muy estimulante, muy estimulante. Sí. Fue, uh -huh. eh, si me ayudas traduciéndole, yes. y, y, y creo que fue muy claro, muy preciso uh -huh. y muy agudo. It was very clear and very precise and very accurate. Oh, so, thank you. So she thank thinks it was a great success. Mm, it was my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Vamos a recibir a otra periodista un ratito. Yo otra vez. <laughs> sí. no, es que en el pausa no me dio tiempo porque había tanta mucha cola. Gente preguntando. No, y, y mucha cola en el baño. Entonces yo sí. ahora sí que una, tengo una que ir. periodista del periódico yeah, más importante de la ciudad. ¿El país? Aquí. El país. Ok, sí. pues tengo que ir al baño para responder. Vale, vale, vale. <laughs> Vamos. Adiós, mucho gusto. ¿Te ha gustado la conferencia? Sí, sí. sí. Perfecto. Pues ya me puede escribir.